and welcome to how to build a recipe with Wadoop. So over the course of today, we're going to learn how to build a recipe. We're going to learn some of the best tips and tricks to get the most out of your recipe. And we're going to learn how the user interface for the recipe works. So to start off with, we're going to head to your dashboard. Now your dashboard is the one, is the first screen that you see when you sign up for Wadoop. And in order to build your recipe, click on the third button called Bot Recipe. Now you can create your own recipe and you can choose a template and name it whatever you want. So I can call it Anush, I can call it test one, or I can really call it whatever I want. I already have a recipe prepared and it's called Anush's lead gen recipe. So I'll click edit on that. Now this is effectively the most basic lead generation recipe you can get. This is your default setting. So if you create a brand new recipe, you will get a screen that looks exactly like this with the exception of this top left corner, which I can change to call test one or test for example, so click test, save changes. Now, the reason we at Verloop call this flow of bot making a recipe is because like a perfect recipe, it has ingredients and these ingredients can't be too many, it can't be too few, it can't be the same recipe over and over again, it can't be the same ingredients over and over again, it effectively tailors to your customer or to the person you're serving it to. So as you can see, this is the user interface for the recipe builder and it is divided in three major sections. Now, the first section is called the micro section, second section is called the macro section, and third section is called the post production section. Now, in the micro or map section, you can see that there are five different blocks currently present. So these are called blocks. This is a message block, as you can see, denoted by the icon next to it, which correlates to the message. This is a question block, as you can see, so it has a question mark near it. And this is a transfer block which you can see because they both have like a dude with a plus sign on them, next to them. Now, none, so the order of these blocks aren't chronological in order. So the idea is all I have to do is simply create a new message and new messages added at the bottom. And I can say, hey, that I'm good, all right? And this, I shall call it goodness save. And you see the block goes all the way to the bottom. So this means that this isn't a hierarchical order. It, the, the bottommost block is effectively just the block that you use last. So for now, I can delete this block and remove. This is called the macro section of the, of the UI. The idea is that once you click on it for any block, it shows you an in-depth detailed analysis of what that block is and what that block does. So for example, if I click on welcome, I'm greeted by a message that the bot is that that is that the bot is giving you. If I click on name, this is the question, because it's a question block, and this is the question that the blo uh, that the bot is going to ask your customer. And for transfer, this basically is the kind of uh, messages that your user will see, that your customer will see when it is handed off to say a representative of your company. And on your left, on your absolute right, I'm sorry, you see variables, webhook, email, and Zapier. I'll explain these three in detail in uh, down the video, but for now let's stick with variables. Now, for example, in this question, it says, please let me know your name. So I'll make that slightly more informal, I'll say, What's your name? Now, obviously, when your customer responds to this, you A, want to save this, you want to save his answer. And you do that by using variables. So, for example, once his response is there, you can save it to a variable that is either name, phone, or email ID. Say you have something aside from that. Say you have query. Actually, you know, say you have a different... Um, a different variable that you would like to say, you can save it as gender, for example. We can click save, gender is added, and at any given point of time, you can save this variable as gender. So I can say, what's your gender? What can ask what your gender is, and I can save it as a variable to gender, All right? So for now, let's stick with name, and let's stick with what's your name and as you can see different blocks have different have different variables that are saved so for example if i'm on the welcome block i can choose which block goes which is the next block in the flow so the idea is i can click 
name, for example. And after the bot is done presenting this message, it will automatically move on to the next block. Next block being what's your name. As you can see, choose from existing blocks. Email is next. So after it's done with this question, it will move on to the next block, which is email. Email, the answer, the reply from your customer to please let me know what your email is, is save the variable email. At the idea where they don't have, where they don't follow the basic principles of email etiquette, which is, for example, say, if they don't have Anush at verloop.io, the bot effectively, so bot renders that message invalid, or if they don't have Gaurav at Verloop or uh, Vinod at gmail.com, or as if it doesn't follow the standard text or the format of a email address, the bot renders that message invalid and asks the user to type again. So it says, need your email to uh, move forward. Please share your email to proceed. And you can change these as willy-nilly as much as you want. So you can say, um, please let me know what your real email ID is and you achieve the same principle. In advanced options, you can say, make this question mandatory for the user. So for example, say you want the email ID, you do not want the person to be able to move beyond the bot without providing his email ID. So you click that. And if the user says no, if the user says, no, I don't want to share my email ID, it says, I understand your concern, but I still need your email ID to move on. This can be changed as well. So I understand, but please let me know what your real email ID is. Okay. So now that this is a mandatory question, until the user provides a valid email address, the bot does not move forward in the flow. So the bot basically keeps repeating this message until that, until you provide an email ID. As you can see right here, the next block is query. So you can click the next block over here and it takes you to your query. The idea is it saves your query as a variable and asks, please let me know your query and it moves forward. And just as it's done, it moves forward to a transfer block. Now in a transfer block, it effectively sends your bot to one of your agents. Now to understand, how to build these SPs, what I'm going to do is delete it. So I'm going to delete it all. So I'll say, nope, don't want that. Nope, don't want that. And we're going to start from scratch. So remove and delete. Now, you can't delete the welcome block because it is the first block that your message, that your, um, that your customer is greeted with. So for example, let's personalize this some more and say, hey, I'm Anush's bot. Now, one of the most important things that differentiates human conversation, for example, is that it comes in bits and pieces. So I could, for I could just say, I'm just in the same message going to say, I'm going to help you out with lead generation and any other queries you might have queries you might have. But obviously this is not what what humans text like, humans text in bits and pieces. So in order to make the bot more natural, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that and I'm going to create a new block. And in, I'm gonna call this new block, for example, purples. I'm going to paste this here. So now what happens is, click save. What happens is the bot says, first prompts that message saying, hey, I'm Manish's bot, and then moves on to, I'm gonna help you out with lead generation today and any other queries you might have. This makes the bot seem more natural in its existence. Now, what we need is to get to know the customer better because that's how it works. So you click question and you call this, for example, name. So we want to know the customer's name. Now, the idea is you wanna add, you wanna act or you want to be as human-like with your customer as possible. So you can say, hey, what's, so what's your name? Question mark. Now, obviously I want to save my customer's answers in case I need to get back to them. So I will save this response to a variable, choose this variable and I will go name. So now whatever the user asks, whatever the user says, it is saved as a variable. 
Now, in case like he puts numbers or so, or like some other variable, the bot is going to render that invalid. So what we're going to do is make this a little more personal and say, please let me know what your name is. I promise I won't tell anyone. So that way, it, it even if the even if the person is a bit hesitant, he he gets that as a response and he realizes, okay, like what's the worst that can happen? So he says, okay. So now we move to advanced options, and obviously, I want I want to know this person's name because conversations are very difficult to go about when you don't have someone's name. So I can make so I'm going to make this question mandatory, and when he says no, I'm going to say, please. Don't be shy. What is your name? And save. All right. So now that we have our customer's name, we're going to ask our customer for his email ID. So we had another question. Before that, I shall click save, and the block is now called name. So click question again. And this time, we're going to use email ID and save. Now, obviously, email ID is slightly more personal. Um, property of say of, of your customer and maybe they're a bit hesitant to give it out just just for free so what we're going to do is we're going to personalize this message a little bit by referring to your customer by your name now the system already knows what the customer's name is because we've gotten it from this block here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call on this name so i will put two flower brackets so first i'll set all right thank you i'm going to put two flower brackets or type in name or more call so now for example if i say so if my reply to the bot is after it asks me so what's your name is anush in the next block so it says all right thank you anush what's your email id may i know what your may i know your email id now the idea is that this makes it a more personal connection with the bot and so the idea, and so it makes your recipe just slightly more um, intimate. So you save this response. So you save this user response to a variable. You call the variable email. If it doesn't qualify, you can say that doesn't look like a valid email address. Could you try? again all right and i obviously want this to be a mandatory question uh, mandatory um, response because this is a lead generation bot first and foremost so i will say i'm sorry but i'm afraid afraid that i need your email ID to move forward. So if the so if the customer says no, I don't want to give you my email address, the bot prompts that message. The idea is that your customers are after a bit more willing to give you their email address. So now for our second last for our penultimate block, we require the query that the bot that the that the customer is facing. So we can call this bot calls block query. And hit save now um, you can ask so what's troubling you today All right what's troubling you today save the user response to a variable like we've done before call it query and say that doesn't seem right could you try again in case the bot text query is invalid and we want to make this mandatory so you can say understand your concern i still need this information to move forward perfect so now we've covered one two three four five blocks now once we've collected the customer's name their email id and their query we effectively transcribe the lead and what we're going to do now is hand it off to one of your customer representatives and that happens with the transfer block as you can see here so at the transfer block and you are greeted with different 
conditions. So the idea is that under each condition, if it is met, the bot gives a difference and so on. So let's call this transfer and hit save. So if the message to be sent before transferring the room to, to an agent, so what you do is you say, this is the message that the customer receives right before he moves on to the agent. He says, all right, I'm setting you up, you up with an agent right now. Save. If there's no agent online, it says, sorry, there are no agents available right now. Message to be sent asking for additional query in case no agent is online. Do you want to add anything to your query? Question mark. And message to be sent before closing the room in case no agent is online. Thank you for talking to us. We'll get back to you soon. So the idea is that it covers a full range of options in case your agent is present, in case your agent absent, like different conditions in case your agent is absent, and so on and so forth. So now we've collected their name, their email ID, their query, and we've transferred it successfully to an agent. Now, you might want this data that you have, that you have so the name, email ID, and you might want it on another, um, you might want it on another platform. For example, you want to get an email every time like someone talks to the bot. That is made possible by the exporting of data. So we have three major exports, uh, export forms right now. So let's start off with email first. The idea is export data via email and you can put Anush at verlook.io. Now, so every time someone talks to the bot and every time someone provides the bot with name, with a name and email ID in a query, I get a notification. So I click enter and save. So the idea is now every time someone signs up, we I get a notification on my email ID. Next, we have Zapier, which I have explained, which we have explained in another video because it's a slightly long process that you can use. And lastly, you have web. So just to recap, we have name of the recipe, uh, section one, which is the mini, mini section or map section, section two, which is the macro section, and section three, which is the post-production section. And so now that we've built our recipe from start to finish, you can click save changes and voila, your recipe is ready.